The Million Dollar Firebreak. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Today we have an episode of Heiser Classics. We'll be looking at a video I did discussing the million dollar firebreak and Labour's tree clearing laws here in Queensland. It is just shocking, shocking the issues that this owner had just trying to protect his home and how much money the state wasted on it. So please check it out, have a look and share it around because not enough people know what went on here. And now with all the bushfire issues we had, a lot of people who built fire breaks seem vindicated. Take care, guys, and we'll be back with our regular programming very soon. Bye for now. Are Labour's tree-clearing laws putting homes and lives at risk? Let's have a look. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Heiser Says. When Labour got into power here in Queensland, they made changes to tree-clearing laws for farmers. We have now had a bushfire season begin and a string of bushfires up and down Queensland. And these are some images from last week or a few, uh, week or two ago that show just the devastation these fires have. If we look here at the current bushfire map, there's no emergency warnings or watch and act. It's just information at the moment. So it's looking a lot better. I think up here near Cairns, they had six vehicles. Yep, going to this one. Last update was at 9.40, so 14 minutes ago. So you can see here that hopefully it's calming down a little bit. But I want to talk about the outcry from farmers and a recent case with regards to land clearing. Now, when you have property, rural property, and you've got a forest, you want to create a fire break. That's a gap in the vegetation so the fire can get contained and not continue to spread. They're common everywhere. The fire, forests or, you know, our subtropical forests, our eucalyptus forests, they need fire to reinvigorate, to grow again, to get new life coming, to get rid of the rubbish on the ground. And the Aboriginals have been burning, controlled burning, forever. So it's something that needs to be done. But these fire breaks are there to protect people, to protect property. And uh, there's a few issues with them. So... Farmers are demanding a far-reaching commission of inquiry into the state's week-long devastating destructive infernos and are blaming the Palaszczuk government's green-inspired land-clearing laws of exacerbating the bushfires. So we have a Green Party here in Australia and we have a Green Party in Queensland that threatens some of the seats for Labour state members. So naturally they, ha they brought in these environmental protection laws. And that all sounds good. It all sounds good, but the problem is people don't see the bigger picture. They don't understand the consequences of what they're voting for. So you're getting people in inner city Brisbane making decisions that can risk people's lives in remote Queensland. They can risk property in remote Queensland. It's that simple. But no, people don't see it like that. They want to sip their little latte in the inner city cafe, be happy that they did the right thing. And uh, now we're seeing the outcome. As the devastating damage bill and emotional toy toll unfold, peak farming group, ag force and individual farmers have accused the government's confusing and constantly changing Vegetation Management Act from allowing them to protect their land from fire. See, I've got experience with acts and the changing complexity of it and the frustration of working with them. And following this, we'll read an article where a farmer was Pretty much he has to pay a million dollars because he didn't clear correctly and he got all these different directions. So Northern Australian Minister Matt Canavan told the Courier Mail last night that a judicial inquiry just like the Queensland Floods Commission of Inquiry in 2011 was needed to get to the bottom of where the Labor's laws contributed to central Queensland's shocking fires. Ag Force Greg Leach backed the call. Well, yeah, no, that I, I think that is necessary because the problem is governments make legislation. They don't understand the consequences. They're just thinking of their votes. It has also emerged. Scott Morrison has offered the state government use of the Australian Defence Force to help in the recovery, but it has refused. I hope that's done because it isn't needed, but I can assure you that the uh, firefighters would be bloody exhausted. They're, they are true heroes saving people and lives in this, this type of situation. 
and Aleta to Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk. Capricornia MP Michelle Laundry MP for Flynn. Cantor Doyle and Dawson MP George Christensen said there were 300 soldiers from 7th Brigade and 75 from 3rd Brigade on standby ready to help. Why didn't you take them? Why didn't you take them? I'm sure you could deploy them. It's insane. I guess they have reasons. We don't know all the facts. Maybe they were embarrassed to be getting help from a, a coalition government. It couldn't be like that. You think it could? Let me know in the comments if there'd be this pity. That's petty. And Queensland Senator James McGrath moved in the Senate yesterday a motion that recognised that the Queensland government's laws prevented landholders from properly protecting their property from bushfires. It was tied, which means it was defeated. I wonder if that motion, if it had a passed, would have had legal implications. Maybe the farmers then could get more uh, reparations or they could sue the government. Wouldn't that be good? Labor did not support it, and One Nation Senator Pauline Hanson did not turn up for the vote. Oh, come on, Pauline. That's a shame. Would have been good to represent, your, you know, the regional Queenslanders that I'm sure you've got a strong base in. Farmers have taken to social media blaming the government's laws for making it hard to get rid of growth, which creates more fuel for bushfires. Yeah, it's that simple. Dr. Leach, Ag Force Queensland Senior Policy Advisor, said the Palaszczuk government's amendments to vegetation management laws had made conditions worse on the ground for landholders. So it's more red tape, more government bureaucratic BS, which is having a physical impact on what these people can do to protect their homes and their family. Okay, you can't argue with me that this isn't an example right here. It just shows you that government gets involved in anything. It's just insane. Dr. Leach said the Vegetation Management Act introduced by Labor 20 years ago had been amended more than 40 times. 40 times. That's, that's twice a year. I get a building code every year, every other year, and I've got to keep up to date with it, and that's frustrating. But 40 times. How the hell can farmers be expected to keep up with that? Miss Palaszczuk had previously rejected accusations her government's vegetation management laws were in any way responsible. Of course she did. Of course she did. But she would have no idea. She's a teacher. She's an ex-teacher. How would she know? How would any of them know? So, QFES Commissioner Catherine Carroll said on Sunday the legislation had not changed the way fire risk was being managed. Fire and Emergency Services Minister Craig Crawford told the Courier Mail earlier this year that landholders could still undertake hazard reduction burning by obtaining permits from the Rural Fire Service as it, as it uh, is allowed under the Fire and Emergency Service Act in 1990. You need to get a permit to do it. Why? Why do you need a permit? Maybe you need to inform them that you're doing it so they can take put strategies in place if it goes out of control. We'll see. So, uh, Senator Canavan said when he spent three days with people ravaged by fire last week, they were furious about Queensland government's restrictions on backburning and land clearing. Yeah, they've made it too complicated. You've made 40 changes in 20 years, two changes every year, and then you're telling them to deal with this other department. I've, I've had to deal with all these departments as an architect, trying to just do a, a refurbishment on a shopping centre and dealing with all these different government bodies just to get a little letter saying, yeah, I can do what I can do anyway. It is insane. It is just utterly insane. People should have the right to protect themselves and their property through appropriate land management, he said. Yes, I like this guy. Yep, that makes complete sense. The Queensland government needs to listen to those with real knowledge on the ground. So we have a look here. Here's uh, counting the cost of destruction. 15 homes have been found to be damaged, 12 of them severely. $120,000 has so far been raised for the fire recovery effort. That's not much. Wow. But that's good. That's good. Mr. Palaszczuk released a statement yesterday afternoon revealing QRA had assessed more than 450 properties and found 15 homes. And more than 60 sheds and other structures were damaged along with burnt vehicles and farm machinery. Looks like there's no loss of life. So, okay. Farmers are bitching. People are losing their homes. They can't protect themselves. Let's have a look at this example. Now, this is from uh, 
what is it beef beef industry today or i'll i'll uh beefcentral.com i'll put a link in the description it's not a news website i would regularly go to but this landholder queensland landholder was hit with a record one million dollar penalty for making his fire breaks too wide and this was this is from march so it's, it's a bit old but considering that we've now had all these bushfires and he made his fire breaks too wide i think it's important to get a bit of understanding over what he's gone through let me just center that there so how wide can a fire break be in queensland getting the answer wrong despite receiving compl- conflicting advice from several different queensland government staff has just resulted in the queensland landowner being forced to pay $999,780 in fines and court costs. So he's received advice from government representatives, conflicting advice, followed that advice, now he's out a million bucks. Because he made it too big. He cleared a few trees in the middle of Queensland. You know, maybe it should have only been this big. You know, oh no, he lost that tree. Is that, is that worth a million dollars? Is it? That's insane. There's no way those amount of trees could be worth that much. It would have no impact on the animals in the area, you know, making it this big to this big. It would be tiny, but it may be enough to save half the forest. The animals are going to die if there's a bushfire. So it, it just, it seems ludicrous. It's like they were sending a message. The figure, a record since Queensland Vegetation Management Act came into effect in 1999, incorporates a $276,000 fine and in order to pay the government $723,000 in costs. Now, just think about that. All of the government employees that were engaged for this were probably already on staff. They maybe had to get a law firm, but I guarantee you they've got government lawyers. So should a government actually be able to recover costs anyway? And this fine, how did they justify that? It's probably penalty units in the Act that don't relate to the actual real costs because... You know, is that a crime? Sure, we need to protect our natural resources, but he is not going to be making any money off this land. It's not like he can be planting, you know, marijuana crops here or cotton crops or anything here. It has to be kept clear and he has to go through it and maintain it. So he's got a cost to protect, you know, the surrounding bush to maintain this. He's taking on a responsibility because he made it a little bit too big for wrong advice. This is getting me angry. In the wake of the severe punishment, which has left the landowner devastated, I bet it has, according to his legal team, landowners seeking to undertake future clearing works in areas containing native vegetation, even for a fire break fence line or road, are being urged to urgently seek legal advice before starting. That's what you need. Now, you need to get a bloody permit to build a fire break. You need to get legal advice. Not even that. You can't even ring up the, the government and get advice from them because it still costs this guy a million bucks. So, Michael Vincent Barker of Chess Park, Edsvold, sorry, was this week found guilty in the Brisbane Magistrate Court of unauthorized clearing of 367.5 hectares of native vegetation. Mr. Barker was found guilty of 39 charges under the Vegetation Management Act and seven charges under the Forestry Act relating to the width of clearing associated with fire breaks fence lines and access tracks on his property and also failing to comply with the self-assessable code for native forest practice. So it's not like they will go out there and help you do it. They won't tell you you have to do it exactly like this. They will. It's not like you have to submit plans for the government to approve and stamp. Maybe they need to. Maybe Maybe because this is so confusing... And they make it so complicated, the government needs to take responsibility and start assessing the plans, stamping it and approving it and taking on all the costs of this, because this is insane. Magistrate Elizabeth Hall of the Brisbane Magistrate Court fined Mr. Baker $276,000 for the 46 offences under the Vegetation and Forestry Act. She also ordered restitution for loss of forestry products of seventeen grand. Okay, Sure. In addition, she ordered Mr. Baker to pay 165 and 541 of costs incurred by the department in investigating and prosecuting him. I wonder, probably they could have gone and done an assessment, a drawing, 15 grand at that. You know, should this is insane. 
The total cost incurred by the Queensland government in pursuing this prosecution as disclosed to the court was $2.2 million. $2.2 million. If they had, instead of spending this money to investigate this one guy who made things a little bit wider, they put that money in a pool and said, okay, we've got a unit here, the Firebreak Design Unit, and they will go and manage and give you a free design for your fire breaks on your property. Government approved, stamped. Two people could probably do it. Three. But no, no, rather they'd want to have a punitive system in place. It, it just... It, it's... I, I feel real sorry for this guy. Mr. Ba uh, Baker's lawyer told Tom Marlin from the Marlin or Roma said, Mr. Baker has previously filed an appeal to the district court based on magistrate's Hall decision and will appeal the cost and sentencing and imposed as part of these appeal proceedings. Mr. Marlin had previously indicated that before Mr. Baker commenced the clearing in question, he contacted 32 different government employees seeking advice on the acceptable width of fire breaks. So he wasn't negligent. You could argue that it is reasonable if he showed this effort and got this advice he said he received conflicting advice ranging from 1.5 meters wide to 1.5 times the height of the tallest tree. The Vegetation Management Act provided an exemption for clearing remnant vegetation if the clearing was to establish a fire break and provided the break was no more than 20 meters wide or 1.5 times the height of the nearest vegetation. The act also allowed for the clearing necessary to remove or reduce the imminent risk that the vegetation posed poses of serious personal injury or damage to infrastructure. That all sounds very reasonable. Mr. Baker was motivated to construct effective fire breaks because his 9,242 hectare property, Chess Park, was almost totally burned out by bushfire soon after he bought it in May of 2011. The fire caused $300,000 worth of damage to property and infrastructure. After that event, Mr. Baker was determined to construct fire breaks to protect his family. Yeah! Good, good work, mate. Property and livestock from future fires. He said Mr. Baker applied the advice of 1.5 times the tallest tree in determining the width of his fire breaks. Narrower fire breaks would provide no protection if the burning trees fell across, across the break and continued the fire on the other side. Yeah. Well, you know, some of these fires can be insane and the fire actually can go under the ground and the roots and appear everywhere, but that seems a completely reasonable approach to take with trees measuring between 18 and 32 metres, an average of 25 metres was applied, resulting in a fire break in fire break widths of 40 metres. Okay, that's that seems completely reasonable. Let me know in the comments. Do you think he's, he's this is incorrect? Makes sense. Mr. Baker advised the department of his plan and his intention to commence the work. However, some two years after the work began, he was advised by the department that his breaks were too wide and legal action followed. So he advised them, and I bet you they didn't look at it for two years. The result was Magistrate, Magistrate Hall's decision in the Brisbane Magistrate, Magistrate's Court this week. This is the full media statement. So a Queensland landowner has been required to pay nearly $1 million for illegally clearing native remnant vegetation at its property. Oh, what? North Burnett region. Department of Natural Resources and Mines Director General James Pertil said Mr. Vince, uh, Michael Vincent... Baker had been found guilty of a total of 46 offences. Okay. So, this is just repeating what we've got in the article. So, does this seem fair to you guys? Does this seem... You'd, you'd hope he'd be able to have argued that he took all reasonable care. He, he applied duty of care. He contacted the appropriate authorities. He put a strategy in place, he informed those responsible for that strategy, and he did not receive any instruction to not proceed with it. He was concerned with the safety of his family and his property, and he was clearing some vegetation. It seems like a open and shut case. One million dollars in fines, even a quarter of a million in fines seems insane. It probably, I would be happy if you just cop the 17 grand, going, you've reduced this amount here, um, you're required to leave this portion to regrow or replant, put a few trees in there, let it regrow over time, only maintain this area. 
So if you're saying, okay, it has to be this wide, please ensure this clearance is maintained. You'll find 17 grand for loss of wood products and this area here has to be maintained, has to grow, you know, rather than a million dollars, rather than government spending $2.2 .2 million investigating this. How the hell does it cost $2.2 .2 million when they had to go, hang on, do I have the, uh, I lost the Google Earth, but it's not that far in Queensland, it's not that remote. It's like a 70 buck flight to Rockhampton. You know, and you hire a car. I've, I've worked in regional Queensland for some projects from the city. It doesn't take that long. You know, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. It, it seems like we do need an investigation into this because if this is happening, it seems ludicrous. It really does. And people are just getting too insane about these type of things. From You know, may, maybe, maybe we do need just cut Queensland in half and you need a regional Queensland, a far north Queensland, and just keep Brisbane, Sunshine Coast, Gold Coast as its own little state and everything else can go by itself because you've got city city people making decisions on these type of things, implementing legislation, policy. I'm just disgusted that the government comes back two years later and finds him for this type of stuff. I don't know. Let, let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. This month, I'm trying to get a video out every day. So you get for a variety of long ones and short ones, depending on what I've got to do. Some backed up, some not. But thank you all for joining me, and I will see you all again next time. Bye for now.